Happy Wednesday. How you doing, huh? Hey, I want to talk to you today about how people get diabetes. How that happens. Or any other major illness, for that matter. But we're going to concentrate today on diabetes. A lot of people out there have it. It's epidemic in our country right now. I want to tell you how it happens. And why it's epidemic now but it didn't used to be. There's a reason my entourage is not available this morning, so I had to get myself fixed up. How do I look? I look good. I am a wonderful person. I was talking to somebody about that yesterday. You know who you are. I am a wonderful person. The rest of my life is the best of my life. Say that with me. Say that with me. That's why I say that every day. I want you to say it with me. Say it with me. The rest of my life is the best of my life. I am smart. I'm getting smarter every day. I'm extremely talented. People like me. Everything works out for me. Amen. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. How many of you know that what you think about yourself is what other people think about you. How you treat yourself is how other people treat you. How you respect yourself is how other people respect you. You don't have to demand respect. All you have to do is respect yourself. And other people will show you respect. Amen? If you love yourself... People will love you. I love myself because I know God loves me. I love my life. But I know where I'm going. Amen. I love this time that God has given me here on earth. I'm going to make the most of it. That's what I tell people. I'm going to make the most of it. After what I've been through, and I was talking to somebody about what brought all this up is I was talking to somebody about it yesterday. So it's fresh on my mind and in my heart. And after what I've been through in my life, I just praise God every day. Every day I get up and I say, Lord, thank you for this day. And I'm going to make the most of my life while I'm here. Because I am only here by the grace of God, folks. Let me tell you. And so are you. So are you. Amen. Go to my website, increasenow.com, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. At the end of this video, there'll be a button, a subscribe button. Push that subscribe button. The more subscribers we have, the better placement we get for our videos, and the more people will, who will watch them. Amen. Share these videos. You can share these videos, folks, and that is the way that you can do the work of an evangelist. That's all you have to do. Forward these videos to people. Nowadays, evangelism is so easy to do, anybody can do it. Tell your friends about these videos. Forward, hit share on Facebook if you're watching them. <clears throat> if you're watching them on Facebook, hit share. And if you're watching them on YouTube, copy the link, send the link to people. Say, hey, you have got to see these videos. Especially if your friends are sick and broke. Say this with me. I will never be broke another day in my life. Amen. I'll never be broke another day in my life. Now, I want to, oh, and don't forget, if you need prayer today, call me. And especially if you do your offerings and donations today, make sure you call because I want to speak the word for word blessing over your offering. God gave us a blessing to speak. He said, this is how I want you to do it. And I want you to do it word for word. So I do. That's why you hear that blessing. Because that's how God, that's not my blessing, folks. That's God's blessing. I am bestowing upon you the blessing of the Lord. At that point, it is God's obligation to bless you because he said he would. 
So I take him at his word. And I want more than anything in this world, I want all of God's people to be blessed. Amen. Glory to God. How people get diabetes. It is rampant in this country. It is just so, it is so prevalent. It is literally an epidemic. It has kept the internal medicine doctors busy. We wouldn't need so many of these internal medicine doctors if it wasn't for diabetes. Amen? Now, the reason for this is because of hereditary problems. Can I say generational curse? That's where it comes from. Diabetes is coming from generational curses. Most people who have diabetes have a history of diabetes in their families, which means it has been inherited. It's passed down. That's why when you go to the doctor's office, uh, the first thing they'll do is they have you fill out all these forms and they want to know what went on with your relatives. What kind of sickness and disease your relatives had because that tells them what's going on in your life. Amen. That tells them what's going on in your life if there's any form of diabetes or if there's any form of heart disease. Heart disease always follows diabetes. Amen. Now, there has never been any diabetes in my family that I know of. All the way back to my grandfathers on both sides, my grandmothers on both sides, uh, brother, sister, as far as I know, I don't think there's been any diabetes. Therefore, no generational curse. But they tried to start it with me. Years ago, uh, I went to the VA because I was eligible for the VA. So I was going up there. Somebody talked me into going up there. I said, oh, the tree. And they were good. They were very good to us. Very, very good up there. And I had a wonderful uh, lady, a nurse practitioner that took care of me. And she was great. She was great. I, I, I really liked her. And she was very thorough and very knowledgeable. And she was wonderful. Uh, now I'm not because uh, I have this really good health insurance that I have. So I go down here to all and I have everything is paid for and taken care of, which I really don't need, but I have it anyway. So I don't go to the VA anymore. But they told me I was pre-diabetic, bordering on diabetes. I've been told that several times. So what I did to get rid of it is I broke any potential generational curses. And here lately, I've lost 30 pounds, 35 pounds. I lost 35 pounds. I gained five back. If you have to know the truth. Now I need to lose that five again. Amen. Because I, I want to keep my weight down about 165. And that's where it was. Now I'm up to about 170. So I want to stay down there. And I do not desire to eat ice cream or cookies. If I stay off the ice cream and cookies, I lose weight. Amen. But diabetes always follows weight. Because what happens is a person gets what they call visceral fat inside their abdomen. Not the fat that is outside, that hangs on the side that everybody wants to get rid of. Not that. It's the fat inside the abdomen that causes diabetes and liver problems because that fat crushes the pancreas and will not allow the pancreas 
to function. It'll literally crush off some of the uh, arteries and blood supplies going into the pancreas, and the pancreas will shut down. That's diabetes. No more insulin. So they have to give you insulin. Amen. Now, there's other reasons for diabetes, but that's one of the main reasons is weight. Amen. Most people, if they're told they're pre-diabetic, if they go through a big weight loss, they'll never be diabetic. But the big thing, like all sickness, like heart disease, and like arthritis, and especially diabetes, are caused by generational curses. Amen. And if we get rid of how to break curses, if we get rid of these curses, the diabetes many times will go away. That's why when somebody calls me who is sick, the reason we get so many people healed and we have had so many miracles is because the first thing I do is break the curse. Breaking the curse causes the spirits of infirmity to leave because they no longer have a legal right to be in your body. Now, I've heard so many preachers say, sickness has no legal right to be in your body. Not true. Not true. If there's a curse in your life, that gives sickness a legal right to be there. A curse gives demons and unclean spirits a legal right to operate in your life. If you have a curse of poverty, then these curses, then these spirits of poverty can operate in your life and stop you from ever becoming prosperous or living in abundance. If you have curses of sickness, which all comes under the curse of the law, then these curses of uh, and spirits of infirmity like Jesus cast out have a right to operate in your life. Remember, Jesus healed all who were oppressed of the devil. I guarantee you every one of them had curses going on. And when he healed them, he automatically broke those curses. People say, well, Pastor Jim, we're redeemed from the curse of the law, so Christians can't be cursed. Oh, yeah? Well, why are so many Christians sick and broke? Because the curse of the law is operating in their life. What I do to get sick people healed, and it works every single time, if you just sit back and receive it. And if you haven't received your healing, it's because you haven't received it from me. But thousands and thousands of people do. I break the generational curse. I break the curse of the law. Then I command that spirit of infirmity that comes with that curse to leave, and people get healed. And I say, glory to God. Now, that's, it's wonderful. Folks, somebody said to me yesterday, oh, Pastor Jim, the way you explain it, it's so simple. People, this is simple. Jesus said, spirit of infirmity, leave her. They touched her, and she stood up. Glory to God. Now, that it doesn't get any more simple than the way Jesus did it. So I do it the same way. And it works. That's why we get so many people with diabetes healed. Amen. All the time. If you have diabetes, call me. If you have heart disease, call me. Cancer, arthritis, all those are from generational curses. Almost all of them. I am out of time today. Call me today if you need prayers answered. Call me today if you need healing. The spirit of poverty and that curse of poverty is the same thing as the curse of diabetes. Only it's different. It's a little bit different. But we get rid of it the same way. I am determined you're going to live a curse-free, blessed life. Make sure you call me today when you do your offerings and donations because I want to speak the blessing over you.